Yes, a gaucho's life is a strenuous business. This exhibition of bronco busting was responsible for the creation of a new cartoon character, Little Gauchito, a boy of the Pampas, and Burrito, his remarkable donkey. Notice this gaucho's belt here, decorated with silver coins. And his recado, or saddle, filled up with many layers of sheepskin, felt, and leather. Out on the pampas, we were treated to a real asado, where whole sides of beef, lamb, and pork are roasted over charcoal fires and served in the open. It was here that we first tasted mate, an herb tea, favorite drink of the gaucho. Argentina is not all open grazing country. Pastoral scenes such as this are found in many parts of the pampas. This is El Carmen, a beautiful estancia near Buenos Aires, where many more color sketches were added to the collection. The artist never ran out of subject matter. The nest of the ornero, or oven bird, often serves as a compass for the gaucho because its entrance always faces north. The chapel of the tree at Los Arboles, at the foot of the Andes, was one of the many beauty spots near Mendoza, center of the vineyard country. Just outside of Mendoza, two members of the party met Don Riborio Sosa, an 85-year-old gaucho and a veteran of the Indian Wars. These are botas de potro, seamless boots, made from a single piece of horsehide. He had a sense of humor and was amused at the interest they took in his costume. Don Riborio's sombrero was quite unusual. It was made of hand-pressed felt and this particular style was worn by the gaucho several generations ago. The Wanaco is found in this western country in the foothills of the Andes. He's related to the llama family, and his hide is used for rugs and clothing. At the San Martin Zoo in Mendoza, we found these Patagonian rabbits from the southern part of Argentina. They're a little shy, but easily tamed. In among these domestic waterfowl, we picked out a few strangers, like this T.U.U., or Stonehead, from Brazil. And a pelican who began showing off when he saw the camera. Here's a spoonbill. And a teru-teru, a popular pet. These and dozens of others were added to our store of Argentine material. And once again, the group was on its way. Leaving Mendoza and flying westward to Santiago, Chile, we all had an opportunity to see what the Andes looked like at 18,000 feet. gave us a rough idea of what the pioneer airmen were up against when they first flew through the Uspallata Pass. Today, we sit back in solid comfort, sniff oxygen from a tube, and fly past peaks like Aconcagua, 23,000 feet, highest in the Western Hemisphere. But the high altitude didn't slow up the artists. Let's see what you've got there, Herb. During the flight, a new cartoon character was born, a baby airplane named Little Pedro. Buen provecho, Pedrito. He even had an actor's appetite. We were sure we'd find music in Chile to fit Pedro's mood like this lively dance number played by Los Quincheros, a popular Wasso group. 
Pihuaso is the Chilean cowboy, similar to the gaucho of the Argentine. They entertain us with their songs and dances at a country festival near Santiago. The cueca, somewhat like the Argentine zamba, is a popular folk dance. The Wasso's hip boots and tight-fitting trousers were in contrast to the gaucho's clothes, but we found quite a resemblance between the traditional dances of both countries. All children have their favorite screen star. And here in Chile, it happened to be Pluto the Pup. The Wasso's insisted that Walt learn one of their popular songs even though he'd never played a guitar before. Meanwhile, Norm is still at it. He never realized that Pluto had such a following. The strain was even beginning to show on Pluto. They were determined to make a dancer out of Walt. He got a big kick out of his attempts to master the quicker. Exhibition dancing was something new for Walt, but they assured him it wasn't bad for the first lesson. By this time, Norm was wishing he'd learned to draw with both hands, but he really got off lightly. Look what it did to Pluto. Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile. Our collection of sketches and music grew steadily as we flew north to Bolivia, land of the Incas. La Paz, the capital high in the Andes, center of Bolivia's history. Vivid colors were the first impressions we got of the marketplaces. The music of Bolivia is as individual as its costumes. The original designs of these handmade garments fascinated the girls of our party. Bolivian babies travel in the rumble seat. Handwoven hats of vicuña wool are in style here. Especially those that protect the ears. Notice the way these dolls are dressed. Almost exact replicas of these mayors of the mountain villages coming from the church at Pisa. The men at the left are the mayor's assistants. The mayor's symbol of office is an ornamental staff decorated with silver designs. And these staffs are highly prized and carefully preserved, each one serving many generations of officials. The proud, haughty-looking llama, or yama, is used all through these mountains to carry small burdens. But you can't overload a llama. If you try it, he'll just calmly sit down and wait until the load is lightened or removed. It didn't take the artist long to recognize the llama's scream value. Its haughty attitude and graceful motion seemed to blend with the local music. And so, another scream character is born. Another colorful picture subject was this custom of communal plowing. Aside from being picturesque, it reflected the spirit of the land, one neighbor helping another. These industrious people are descendants of the Incas and get excellent results with these primitive farm implements. 13,000 feet above sea level between Peru and Bolivia is this enormous Lake Titicaca, 120 miles long and averages 60 miles across. But we were more interested in its color than its size as we sail from one small port to another. On Lake Titicaca are the islands of the sun and the moon, prominent in Indian mythology since the time of the Incas. Three large steamers, carried up the mountains in small sections and assembled here, handle the heavier lake traffic between the two countries. 
but we preferred the sailboats for our sightseeing trips. The scarcity of wood at this altitude is responsible for the balsa boat. It's woven of reeds, but it's good and practical. It takes a lot of skill to handle one in a strong wind, and a strong wind is no novelty up here. In their spare time, the boys build scale models of these boats. Naturally, the balsa went on file for future reference. East of the lake, the railroad climbs to over 14,000 feet near Puno, and a picnic lunch takes the place of a dining car. The mother and daughter idea in clothes might have originated here in Peru. These little fellows work in pairs without a driver. He seems worried about his partner. Now everything's all right. Cusco, with its huge cathedral, is surrounded by ruins of the ancient Inca civilizations. Here we collected more colorful textiles woven in traditional patterns. And as usual, the marketplace was the center of interest. So far, we hadn't found one country where kids didn't like ice cream. Our collection of picture ideas continued to grow as we started homeward. Ecuador, with its remarkable capital Quito, where the equator crosses the Andes. Colombia, its coffee and banana plantations. And the city of Bogota, one of the centers of South American culture. Venezuela, birthplace of Simon Bolivar, the liberator, with its busy seaports and oil fields and farming country. We found our visit much too short to do full justice to all of these attractive places. Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, each had its typical music and atmosphere. Then there was El Salvador, Honduras, and unforgettable spots like Chichicastenango, for instance, in Guatemala. The busy marketplace in the center of town has a church at either end. And here on market day, we saw the devout Indians from nearby towns burning incense on the steps of Santa Tomas Church as they chanted their prayers. Guatemala is the land of the marimba and its music is heard even in the marketplaces. Pottery is an art that's highly developed here, and the potter prefers to pack it himself rather than trust it to a burrow. It seemed to us that the folks here went about their daily work to the rhythm of the marimba. Blending with the marimba notes were the squeals of the little pigs who went to market. We noticed that very few of them went willingly. The artists found much of the gaiety and color of the country expressed by its children and its music. Guatemala is noted for its coffee, but corn is one of the main food products sold in the markets. Plain everyday food is displayed artistically. We saw hundreds of these little dolls, all miniatures of types found in Guatemala. Some no larger than your thumbnail, but remarkable for their color and detail. The young employees of the Mayan Hotel had prepared a special tribute to the father of their favorite movie star. Every one of them was an enthusiastic picture fan. After the formal presentation, they were invited to sample the gift, 
and all agreed that the visit of the Disney party had been a huge success. And we agreed with them when we considered the valuable picture ideas that Chichi Costanango had given us. Then to Mexico to gather more impressions, more music, more color. Close to Mexico's capital are the floating gardens of Xochimilco, a perfect setting for music and romance. Boats decorated with flowers. Here again, we heard marimba music and sounds of guitars as the boats drifted past solid islands of blossoms. Some sell flowers, others food, preparing frioles and tacos over charcoal stoves in their boats. On Sundays and holidays, these canals are a riot of color. The artists and writers found plenty of inspiration at Xochimilco. Perhaps enough for an entire picture. And then we met the charros, the gentlemen riders of Mexico. These business and professional men ride to their charro clubs on Sunday, dressed in the costumes of old Mexico. Here they preserve the traditions of Mexico in sports and feats of horsemanship. The charros may well be proud of their handsome and well-trained horses. They arrange a special jaripeo, or contest, for our artists. A first-class exhibition of roping and riding. Not all of Mexico's fine art is found in its museums. We picked up many suggestions for picture ideas in the pottery designs of Oaxaca and Guadalajara. In every part of Mexico, we found new picture material, like these flower designs suggesting the lace headdress of Tehuantepec. the Yucateca costume of Yucatan, little Tijuanos from the Isthmus, the music of the mariachis from Jalisco, and colors from Serapi designs of Saltillo. Packing everything possible into our crowded luggage, we headed for Hollywood, planning future trips to the countries that time had not permitted us to fully explore. Our first stop was the customs office, where every bit of baggage had to be examined. We'd been through this so often we didn't mind, but the poor customs officials were really in for something. It was perhaps the first time in history that any one officer had faced such an accumulation of sketches, music, souvenirs, costumes, and miscellaneous odds and ends from Latin America. After half an hour of this, the officer was prepared for anything. And when he finally came across Walt's gaucho saddle, spurs, and bridle, his only comment was, You might as well have brought the horse. <laughs> <laughs> 